Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. Uh, sorry about the lack of video. It looks like uh, some something is wrong with my cam link again. I might need to actually restart the whole thing in order to get it to work. Anyway, I, I got too many tabs open and things like that. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive straight into what we wanted to talk about, uh, which is uh, this week's um, uh bitcoin tech talk issue anyway um as as always uh here's here's my book on amazon it is forty dollars and 59 cents last i checked and it continues to be forty dollars and 59 cents on amazon programming bitcoin um and you know the uh bunch of reviews um most of it most of the one star ones are like hey the formatting's bad that's uh since been fixed so anyway um yeah hopefully you guys can uh get uh, get this if you haven't already. Um, the other thing is I have a uh, seminar coming up in New York City, May 16th and 17th. Those are the two days right after consensus. Uh, so yeah, if you are interested in learning about all this stuff, then uh, please go and register there. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at some of the stories from uh, issue number 132. As always, uh, you can... <clears throat> You can sign up for uh, the Bitcoin Tech Talk newsletter using the links in the show notes. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at this. Um, all right, so first thing is uh, understanding Bitcoin, the demos. This is a very good list of all of the different demos that went on during Understanding Bitcoin conference, and you can just sort of get an idea of all the awesome things that are coming down the pike with it. Uh, Blockstream Green with a hard hardware wallet. Um, this is uh, kind of like a two of two. Um, so, you know, you get more security. Trezor multi-sig with Electrum. This is just traditional multi-sig using Electrum. Uh, that's a very uh, interesting demo as well. Um, core from scratch, uh, like uh, make sure that everything is, uh, that you're running the right software and so on. ABC, AB core on Android, um, this is, like basically doing it on Android. Um, and amazingly, you can do that. Udi was a former student of mine. So that's that's awesome that he got to do that. Um, all right, let's see some other stuff. Uh, Cypher node. Uh, yeah, th this uh, it's uh, leveraging uh, full node to do more stuff, um, makes it more useful for various things. Francis Puglio did that. Uh, C Lightning with Core. This is uh, getting everything up and running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Christian Decker did that. Nodal Box. Um, Nodal Box is uh, is pretty awesome. It's uh, it's uh, Lightning in a box, basically a lot like the Casa Hodel. Uh, Nix Bitcoin. I'm not familiar with that. Thor Turbo. This is uh, from Bitrefuel. This is what I talked about last week. You can purchase a channel. Uh, you know that they've already opened for you. Um, Spark and Chart. Spark is a Lightning wallet, uh, and you know basically you can uh, use it as a payment processing system. I mean, th th this a uh, this is a a a whole lot, right? Like I just touched on like the first ten. There's a lot more, and. I would uh, I would encourage you guys to look at these demos and go go through them if you are interested in actually doing something with them. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at this other project, which is interesting: Libre Patreon or Patron, a self-hosted Patreon alternative powered by Bitcoin. I believe this is where we are. Uh, we are all hodl not. Um, this is uh, run with that i think because you can see the little bit uh btc pay logo in the corner um and th this is what it runs on libre patreon um amazing uh you can you can basically pay with anything that btc pay server will take um and that includes lightning payments and so on um and it goes through exactly how to set it up which is which is awesome um at some point maybe i should make one of these i don't i don't really know if i want like a patron patron page or anything like that but maybe for some exclusive content or something like that um 
Uh, er, all right, uh, let's take a look at some other stories. Uh, history of lightning from brainstorm to beta. Aaron uh, Van Wertham really came and uh, and like did a deep dive into exactly how everything uh, came into conception and everything else. Um, very good article. I I, I think um, uh, you know I I would encourage you to read the whole thing about you know, how it came to be, where, where all of the um, different implementations came from, the white paper and so on. Um, so yeah, uh, take, take a look at it and uh, read more about what Lightning is all about. Uh, LND Admin, another interesting project. This builds on top of LND. Uh, LND is one of the um, Lightning implementations, uh, this one specifically by Lightning Labs um, of uh, Elizabeth Stark is the CEO of that company. Anyway, uh, LND admin is uh, is a GUI basically for administering LND, very useful. Um, after you install LND, you basically install LND admin, which is written in Node, and, uh, and it does all of the communicating for you. Uh, very useful, you, you, you can see the nice interface and uh, you can see like a live demo if you go to this website. Um, you know, you can click the wallets, the channels, and uh, peers, invoices, payments. Um, I think you need a login in order to get there, uh, which I unfortunately don't have. All right. Um, all right. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, Lightning limitations. This is a uh, talk from Alex Bosworth. Um, uh, about uh, you know what what actually are the limitations of lightning um, you know when do you use on chain when do you use lightning and that that's basically the question that uh, Alex Bosworth uh, was interested in answering very good uh, transcript of the entire talk I would encourage you to read the whole thing about. You know, it's a it's a question that a lot of people get pretty often, so that that that's useful as well. All right, uh, and Spark Swap. This is uh, um, I, I think I I talked about another service last week that had um, that that was uh, an exchange essentially using Lightning, um, and that's essentially what Spark Swap is doing. Um, they they have a blog. They're they're now on mainnet, so you can essentially do Lightning Network atomic swaps um, and and do some of the you know Bitcoin for Litecoin cross chain atomic swap and so on. Uh, really interesting stuff. I, I mean, this is the uh, the possibility that we've always been anticipating uh, for uh, stuff on top of Lightning. It's great to see that all of that stuff is finally getting built. So. Uh, good stuff there. Um, all right, and the last two stories are from a company that I advise Level. Uh, they came up with something called automated market makers. And um, and if you don't know what a market maker is, basically what they do is they provide liquidity. They um, like if you have some some price that's mid market, that's typically the price that everyone thinks of as the current price of Bitcoin. Um, people are always uh, the people selling are usually a little bit above it, and the people buying are a little bit below it. Um, and the less liquid an exchange is, the bigger that gap is. That gap is called the spread. And uh, and in order to and it turns out that minimizing that spread is not easy. You usually need people with a lot of resources sort of doing um, something called market making. And basically what they do is um, they put two prices and, um, and make uh, and have an algorithm such that uh, they, they make a small amount on every trade, but they're sort of arbitraging the two and providing liquidity on both the buy and sell side in return uh, for some profit. Uh, they, they make essentially the spread. Um, now, this has typically been something that has been confined only to whales because um, all, uh, almost every other exchange, in fact, every other exchange that I, I am aware of, uh, charges a percentage on every trade that you make. So it's uh, usually not a very high percentage. It's like point something percent uh, uh, and usually measured in basis points, which is uh, you know like 100 basis points equals 1%. Um, but that that that's how uh, you know, like that's how exchanges make money. It's on every trade they take a tiny percent, and uh, you know, 
and and do it that way. Um, the thing is, uh, for the little guy, for somebody that doesn't have that much or isn't buying very much, um, you know, they 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 charge a larger percentage than maybe a whale that you know is trading a few hundred Bitcoin at a time. Um, uh, they do that because uh, you know the more volume, uh, you know, they they make essentially make it up in volume, and uh, and the whale can then uh, do something like market making, and that market making starts becoming profitable. So um, until now, it's been mostly confined to the whales, and um, and that's that's essentially what they are opening up to normal users is is this automatic market making. You can provide a tiny bit of liquidity or however much you have, and you get a proportionate reward uh, for doing that. This is something that um, you know whales all over have been doing, and oftentimes this is a very uh, good strategy for um, you know you, you know normal stock exchanges, not just um, you know uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. So they are doing that. You can you can read the white paper here, and this goes into exactly the theory and like the math behind. Uh, the the best sort of uh, algorithm for uh, doing an automated uh, automated market making. Um, I've been using it. Um, I I've, I haven't made much money. I think it's like you know thirty bucks or whatever um, in the course of like uh, four or five days. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it's kind of a cool thing, right? And it gives you access to put your money to work. Um, in in a way, uh, of course, you are trusting them in a, as an exchange. Uh, but you know, I, I did manage to get them to use BitGo, so you you at least have that assurance uh, that BitGo is uh, you know they use multisig and so on. So it's going to be much harder to hack than like a single key exchange like Quadriga or something like that. Anyway, uh, that's something that I wanted to point out as well. Um, uh, once again, I want to uh, point out that the Programming Blockchain Seminar is coming to New York. That's the only one that I have scheduled right now, May 16th and 17th. And of course, my book is available on Amazon. Let's stop sharing and take a look at whatever questions there might be. Um, yeah, there's a BSV got delisted from uh, Binance, and that seems to be having an effect on their price. Um, you know, I, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, is Level.co operational today? Yes, um, it, they are operational in five states. Um, they are a regulated U.S. exchange, and they need to go um, fill out the regulatory paperwork and apply for licenses and so on at various uh, places. Uh, my state, Texas, is one of the places that I that that they support. So, you know, I mean, it's uh, they're they're working on on doing all of that. They they have other features that are coming up that uh, I can talk about maybe later as well. Anyway, um, I, I, I'm sorry about the lack of video and everything. I, I really wish it, it would work. I'm probably gonna have to reboot my computer after this to make it all work. But uh, it was uh, it was good being with you guys. Uh, hopefully that helps you. This song is done.